Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. In this one we'll talk about a topic that I think you might find very very interesting and we'll discuss how to structure a clean architecture application in ASP.NET Core. And this video actually builds up on another video that I have recorded a couple of months earlier which in which we discussed basically how to create or how to structure a traditional layer or n layer or entire application in our case in asp.net core but the principles that we talk about actually can be applied to any type of platform or framework that you might want to use but we will stick here uh, on or with asp.net core now in that one we have exactly described how a standard or a traditional layered application would look like and how will we create our project structure inside our Visual Studio solution based on those very, very important, important principles. And I was saying in by that time that we will also talk about clean architecture. Unfortunately, it took a little bit longer to create this video, but in the end, here it is. So let's get started. Before we can get into the specific, I would just like to head over to the Blackboard and talk a little bit or try to actually visualize what actually clean architecture means. Because nowadays everybody is using this type of a buzzword, clean architecture or clean code. But when I discuss with people, I find out that it's, uh, well, just a buzzword and most of the people don't really actually understand exactly what this architecture is all about. So let's get into it. And here basically also when we think about the clean architecture is also a layered architecture type. So we also tend to actually organize our software by different layers. Now the relationship between layers might be a little bit different than in what we have seen in that standard layer application. And I will try to actually visualize here something that's very, very similar to what we have already discussed in um, in our video about how to structure an, a regular layered application. So we have here at the core uh, a very first layer, which is actually our domain layer. And let's put a D here for domain. Now, what we put in this layer is actually more or less exactly we, we, what we actually have discussed uh, by that time. So if you, for instance, create an application for a bank, then you would have here classes and uh, and different validators and things that actually uh, model how a bank would work and you will have here classes like account like withdrawal like uh, stocks like exchange rates and things similar to that so everything will actually go here in this layer but when we think about clean architecture what actually goes here in this layer is only really stuff that regards the entire domain layer so you could actually take this layer out and put it in another application for a different bank and it should more or less work exactly the same or you shouldn't have to change uh, anything in in those classes so it's very, very domain centric and very, very domain sp uh, specific without uh, really any concern about the application itself. Uh, on top of this domain layer, you could build a web application, you could build uh, maybe even a console application or a desktop application or a smartphone application or and so on and, and so forth. But the core idea is that theoretically you could take this layer and actually reuse it in other applications without the need to change anything. This layer should not depend on anything. Besides this model classes that we use, we can also put here like specifications, like validators. We could put here anything that's actually related to the real core business logic of that domain. But the very, very important thing here, we don't put here anything that has anything to do with the application logic itself. And for that one, we have another surrounding layer, which in clean architecture terms is called very simple use cases. And let's have here a U and a C. So use cases. Now this layer is also or contains application business logic. So in this layer, you would put different things that actually make your application work. And of course, this use cases layer will be then different for each application that you might build. 
So theoretically, you could use the same domain layer, so the same core, but you could, for instance, create a web application. In that case, you would have to create this use cases layer for the web application because there are some very specific flows to a web application, for instance, regarding also authorization and uh, authentication. What does this uh, even mean? Uh, for each application, it could be handled differently. But here also would go things that actually uh, would model the workflows that you will have in your application. And such workflow, workflows you would have even if you have an API, but also, of course, if you have a regular front end. So once again, in this layer, which in clean architecture terms is called use cases, here you put everything that is related to the application logic itself. Now, in the clean architecture paradigm, these are actually all the layers by themselves that are actually very, very important. Because outside of these layers, you could have separate other layers, and let's, let's model them differently. Here, for instance, uh, this layer would be, I don't know, maybe controllers if you have an application, but then you could have another layer, for instance, if you uh, also need some infrastructure. And let's put here an I for infrastructure, like uh, database concerns, like sending emails. Uh, how do we authenticate users? Maybe using external providers. Everything would be here in this uh, infrastructure part. Now, these parts are actually not 100%, I would say, part of the layers itself in clean architecture. They are simply parts of the application that actually rely and work uh, with this use cases layer and this use cases layer then works with this domain layer and or core which contains the enterprise business logic. And of course you could have here different other third party systems that your application might interact with. For instance, you might want to, I don't know, maybe uh, let's have here an API. Maybe you have an external API for the exchange rates or things similar to that. So no matter what actually you need, these, uh, these concerns that are actually not part of the application flow itself, but depend on third parties, they are actually outer layers. Now, the idea here is in clean architecture, and that's also a very, very important concept, is how the dependencies flow. And the dependencies flow always from the outer layers to the inner layers. For instance, these controller layers, which will be actually our API, would depend on the use cases layer. And the use cases layer would depend here on this domain layer. Now, of course, we have this infrastructure and we have other uh, uh, APIs or third parties that we might want to, to integrate with. And this is kind of like a little bit outside, but this would more or less depend for here on this uh, use cases layer because this use cases layer will actually expose some interfaces, for instance, for repositories or for the DB context itself. Now, the implementation of those will be part of this infrastructure layer. And this is why, once again, this principle of dependency inversion is very, very important because this use cases layer just exposes some interfaces and it really doesn't care about how those interfaces are implemented as long as they are implemented. And that's basically it. And of course, uh, your repositories might even also return the main models. That would not be really a best practice from a clean architecture, but it's something that on a practical level uh, you can't always avoid. So this is the main concept about, okay, how clean architecture should look like. Once again, we have this uh, core of the application, which is the domain layer that contains only enterprise business rules or enterprise applications. You could think about this layer always as you can take it out, put it in another application that that is inside the same domain, and it should be reusable without any changes. Then we have this use cases layer, which is the or which represents the application business rules or the application flows. And here you think about services that, that perform some actions and, and things similar to that. And then you would have then controllers, like in our case, a web API, but you would also have an infrastructure part. And you might potentially also have uh, also third party systems that your application might need to talk to. 
And the most important thing, once again, is that how the dependencies flow. Like the outer layers should depend on the inner layer. Dependencies should always flow inwards, not outwards. And this is something that we would have to be very careful about. Now, when it comes to put this into practice, and I will go over and use another IDE, uh, and we will see exactly why probably towards the end of this video. But the idea is that I will use Rider as the IDE for this video. Now, the problem is that when it comes to how to structure a clean architecture project uh, in ASP.NET Core, but not only, you have a lot of different opinions or you can find a lot of different opinions out there that might even be very, very different or fairly different uh, one from the other. And for instance, a very popular guy uh, to which a lot of people look when, when it comes to clean architecture is Steve Smith or Ardalis. And he comes with a model. He even has some templates that you can install directly uh, via a NuGet package and get started with his style of clean architecture. And what Steve Smith proposes is actually something very, very interesting, but it is a clean architecture that is modeled based on the domain-driven design principles. So the problem is that for most of the applications that you might probably work on, that approach is a little bit of an overkill because it adds a lot of complexity to the application itself uh, when, when it comes to all the DDD concepts that actually don't pay off uh, to be implemented because most of the applications are small or mid-sized and domain-driven design probably is most suitable when it comes to large-scale applications. Now, once again, his approach is very, very nice. It's very, very useful if you have to build a new Facebook or the new YouTube since you're watching this on YouTube. But when you build regular applications, that might be a little bit of overkill. On the other side, there are some other approaches to clean architectures in the .NET ecosystem. For instance, Nick Chapsas has another approach, which is based uh, also on, on some, some other, uh, well, opinions that you might find out there. And uh, in that case, you will find out that probably uh, that proposal is, uh, well, very, very nice, very easy to implement. It's okay for very small applications or for small applications, but it really actually thinks about the domain layer as just being some POCO classes, just, just classes that have some properties that you mostly use for persistence in the database and reading from the database. But then everything is actually performed in services or repositories on, or things similar to that. Now, all of these approaches or the problem is that all of these approaches are correct. Now, the, the only thing is that, and I can totally understand it, if you are at the beginning stages of your career or uh, if you're already, I would say, a mid-level developer and start to think about how to architect software, it is actually it is actually very, very hard to make up your mind on which approach might work best because each of, of these opinions uh, has its own, I would say, crowd of followers that are very dogmatic and say, this is the only good approach or this is the only good approach. And it's actually very, very hard to really find a path. But what I will propose here is actually starting from that pattern that actually would be suitable for most of the applications that you will probably build. And that is also the model that is mostly used in a certain way by uh, Nick Chapsas. Uh, so let's go over to this other uh, screen here. And we have here this very, very simple solution and it's weather forecasts clean. And if you have followed the, the other video on how to structure a layered application, you will, uh, you will probably notice that that application was called weather forecast. And of course, this is it's kind of built upon on, on that one. And in fact, we'll also be copying a lot of code probably uh, from there. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. So we have this empty solution. So let's start to model our layers, first of all. So in this case, I would like here to have a new project in this uh, uh, solution. And uh, I would like to have a class library. And let's call this one. Okay, don't know why it doesn't select. Weather forecasts clean. Let me maybe just copy this because it's a very long one. And let's call this domain or core. Now, the naming that we will use is 
once again based on the practice on and on the experience of all the software that i have seen mostly written by others and patterns that most of the most of the developers and even companies use you would usually find the domain layer or to what corresponds to the domain layer so to this to this inner more part of the application you will just usually find it under core because it is actually the core part or the core logic of our application but when it comes to our diagram it's actually this domain part so we can even uh, name it core it would be uh, the language it would be c sharp and framework um, yeah i guess that it should be it it would be dotnet dotnet core class library and uh, that would be i guess okay um, okay so let's let's just create that I'm not exactly sure what writer will create right now. To be honest, it will create a .NET standard project or it will create a, a .NET uh, Core 6. Uh, that's, let's just maybe look into, into this uh, CS profile. But however, this is really now not very, very important. So once again, as said, in this domain uh, part or uh, this core, what we would have here is like we would have a class that would be the weather forecast itself. Uh, okay, let, just let me go to the other screen and copy over the code from the previous application because it's exactly the same code. The only thing that we will do is we will structure this differently. So let's edit this class and let's rename it and we'll call this uh, class weather forecast and I guess that should be okay uh cool so we have this class which is weather forecast um uh, let's just also change this name so that's right now the name of our class and inside of our class we would have of course some uh properties let me just copy them over and that would be it so this is the domain layer once again you get the point if this is application this is an application that handles weather forecasts it will probably uh, have all the classes and validators and rules uh, and how these different classes uh, interact one with the other it will be here in this core project now and here comes the main difference because when we talked about the standard end layer or entire application we have also placed the abstractions for instance for the repositories on or for the services in our domain but if we follow this clean architecture this is not the place to expose them because how you get data how you process the data that's actually a use case that's an application flow this is something that should be placed in the use cases layer not in the domain layer itself because it's not a core business rule it's something that your application needs it's something that your application performs but it is not a core business rule so this being said let's just create another project here and let's add a new project once again let's have this uh, class library and weather uh, forecast clean and right now how do we name this as said in the theory about clean architecture this layer is usually called use cases however in the dotnet world and if you follow all the examples that you see in different conference talks uh, or on different youtube's channel but even if you go on github and look into some code samples or real applications that actually use uh, this type of clean architecture you will mostly find that uh, this layer is actually named usually application instead of use cases and here once again this is another point i really want to emphasize don't get get stuck about namings because namings actually what they do is they kind of represent a certain concept they represent a certain way that we would be supposed to do things they have a certain meaning now you can name it also differently if the meaning is exactly the same then it's exactly the same thing so we will call this in this case application and even if name is actually not use cases like it is in the theory of clean architecture it's conceptually exactly the same thing so it's exactly what we will be doing here so let's also create this layer here now in this layer as said we will have different type of things here and first of all what we will have 
I said, this is the layer that controls the application flow, the application logic, how different parts of the application do integrate one with the other, maybe how different how the application even integrates with third party systems if needed. So everything is handled here. And what this means is that the very, very important thing about these use cases is that in this layer, we would expose the needed interfaces, for instance, for our infrastructure layer. So let's go here and uh, to this newly created project. Now this class, let's just uh, let's just delete it because we don't need that anymore. So let's delete that and uh, add a new class here. So add uh, a class or interface. In this case, we would like to have an interface and let's call this I weather repository. Hopefully I spell it correctly. That should be okay. Now the content of this iWeather repository once again, uh, but it's actually weather forecast. Let's let let us rename that. iWeather forecast repository. Okay, should be simply something like that. iWeather forecast. Let's just also change the name here. Cool. Now in this interface, we'll just have only one method. And as we have seen this layer, and uh, once again, let's go back to our thing here, can depend and should actually have a dependency on the domain layer. So in this case, what we will do here is uh, I'll enter and reference project weather forecasts clean dot core, because this is the reference that we actually want to have. We get back a weather forecast array and uh, that should be it. So that's that's the entire uh, thing. Now here we would also have another interface and let's add a new class or interface and we'll call this I uh, weather forecast service. Uh, sorry, let me just click here. Uh, interface, that's what I want. I weather forecast service. Okay. And in this weather forecast service, once again, what we'll get back is simply a list and it will be also a list of weather forecast. Now we already have the project reference, so we just have or need to add the using here at the top and everything should be fine. Now, this is actually what we would have mostly here in uh, our, uh, our layer. Now, here we still will have to Think a little bit about because here we have two interfaces for two things that are actually totally different. And first of all, we have this iWeather forecast repository, which is actually a concern of data access or how do we access data. So that one actually be belongs to the data access layer or as it is usually called in clean architecture to the infrastructure layer. So this would mean that the iWeather forecast repository will not be implemented here in the application layer, but it will be implemented in the data access layer or in the infrastructure layer. However, this iWeather forecast service, that's an application use case instead, because this actually is the part of the application that knows how to retrieve data uh, from the database using uh, an interface for a repository. It knows how to process the data and it knows what actually to return to whoever might call the service. So this would mean that in this layer, we will implement the services. And that might seem a little bit weird that in the same uh, layer, we'll have both the interface and the implementation when it comes to the service. But as we'll see, this is actually uh, very important when it comes to unit testing and, uh, and things similar to that. We want to be able to just swap implementations if needed, to be able to mock it. And uh, that's why it's not uh, re really bad or necessarily bad to have the interface and the implementation in the same project. So let's add here a new class. In this case, it will be a class and we'll call this class weather forecast service. I guess that's how we actually named our interface. And this will implement the I weather forecast service interface. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, implement interface. 
Okay, why doesn't I don't know the shortcut? Implement missing members. And this is the method for this service. Now let me go over to the other application. And in this weather forecast service, uh, we have this list of weather forecasts. This is actually everything that we need. But uh, here we will even need a constructor and we will need also some dependency injection. So in this case, we'll just add this. Okay, and here the iLogger, uh, I guess for uh, that one. Um, yeah, I guess that's not a .NET uh, core. That's a .NET standard because it actually doesn't uh, know about the logger. But here the logger is not important because we used it to showcase something else actually in a different video. So let's just remove the logger because that's not something that we would need. But what we would need is the repository. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what we'll have here in this constructor. And then in this list of uh, forecast service, we'll actually go and paste over some code that we will have to clean up a little bit because once again here we don't want to log these are from another video for logging so we don't want to log that and we also don't want to log that we just want to actually return a list and that's actually it now for the repository as said we then need to implement in a different layer and this is the infrastructure layer so when we structure our application and uh, yeah, let's name weather forecast uh, clean dot infrastructure. And he, here you would put, as said once again, uh, everything that you would um, actually need regarding access to third party systems, databases, networks, and things uh, similar to that. So here in this layer, instead of having this class, Let's just rename this. Uh, here we have edit and uh, what's rename. And we'll call this weather forecast repository. And we'll also have to change this. Okay. So I guess right now we should uh, be good to go. So if we go back to this layer, uh, which is the infrastructure layer, and here we will have once again this is a, this will actually essentially contain uh, the logic of of getting different uh, uh, data uh, that we usually have in uh, in the template for an asp.net core application now of course here uh, we would also need to make a reference to our domain layer because yeah this is where the weather forecast class resides but you see here we have only the logic that actually gets the data. In our case, everything happens in memory, but here you would inject a DB context and use a DB context to get data and uh, things similar to that. We have a lot of video on how to, to use the repository pattern in ASP.NET Core applications uh, with Entity Framework Core, so you can check them out. But now for, uh, for, for the purpose of, of this video uh, on how to structure an application, this is purely software architecture, uh, it's actually okay that we just simulate this is the way that we actually get the data. Behind of that, you could have a database, of course, and there shouldn't be any problem. Now, of course, this one needs to implement the I uh, weather forecast repository. Okay, and this interface should also be in a different project, uh, create type, but I guess maybe I have some, some problem here. So let's, let's just go back to this uh, weather forecast repository and uh, yeah, let's just copy that over and go here. And, uh, and now I guess Ryder should also suggest yeah, reference the project. Okay, so probably I had a typo somewhere and uh, right now everything is okay. So once again, this would be the repository. So this is the logic for getting the data in the service itself that you would actually implement in the use cases layer, which we name application layer in our uh, case because in most of .NET projects, this is the way that this, this layer is called and I just want to stick to that. 
and here we also have the implementation for the service and here the service it actually processes the data that it receives from the repository and it actually calculates the temperature in fahrenheit uh, so that's actually the logic that happens in the surface and as we see this is actually an application rule an application flow so this is why it is here in this application layer and last but not least let's create here a new project and let's add a new project in this case we don't want uh, we want an asp.net core web application let's call this weather forecasts uh, clean dot api we, because we will create an api uh, c sharp the framework uh, .NET 6 that's okay no authentication docker support uh, i want uh, i want uh, no docker sorry disabled uh, this is not something that we would like uh, and uh, yeah that's actually what we need uh, for this project and it will create us a .NET 6 regular api project now here things are very very simple uh, here we already get here this very basic weather forecast controller and in this weather forecast controller uh, the only thing that we will do here is we'll just uh, implement the logic that that we have so first of all we would have to change a little bit the constructor here because we will not need this part at all we will rely on a service and uh, the constructor will change it instead uh, to be like that so of course we would have to add here some references here is the references to the application layer which is okay uh, then we have this logger which is twice so let's just remove one of them now everything should be fine i guess and we have this constructor and everything works fine in the construction we get the service the service itself will get the repository because we will wire we will wire everything up now the only thing that we will need to do here is uh well in this method uh, or in this controller action we will replace what we actually have here with uh, something that i will copy over from the other application that we used previously so here in uh we will do it like that and we will just return an i action result we could even return i enumerable so we can leave it like that uh now the only thing is we have to clean up a little bit things here like we don't need a stopwatch um here we do some logging scopes and things like that uh, but we'll just remove that because we don't really need this uh, for this application right now uh, so let's just copy it over now this log information we don't need anymore uh, this is also something that we don't need the only thing that we need is actually that we get the result from the service and that's what we do here uh, and here we have also different logging things and uh, yeah that should actually uh, be it of our result uh, this is let's see what type should be a list of weather forecast um, okay and um, that should be an i enumerable so i'm not sure exactly uh, why this actually doesn't uh, or is not acceptable right now but um, let's uh, Let's return an I action result instead. Okay, because we don't return the result in this case, we just return okay and result, and we should be fine. Okay, so right now we have done everything. Now the only thing that we still need to do is to actually wire everything up. And the way that we do this with ASP.NET Core is by using dependency injection. And here in .NET 6, when it comes uh, to the new ASP.NET Core 6 stuff, uh, we have a change startup model. But if you want to take a deeper look into what exactly this means, we have a dedicated video for that uh, on this channel. What I would like to do here is just uh, we have here on the builder uh, dot services, and here once again builder dot services add scoped now the only thing that we need to do here is also get this one and also the repository 
and we need a reference to that one. And we should be actually uh, good to go right now. Now, the very important thing, and it's really not important that we run this application. Right now, we have what it what actually a clean architecture application would look like in most of the cases. But the last thing that I really want to show you, and that's really the important part and the reason that I use Rider today, is that here we have a very, very nice tool, which is an architecture, uh, is this show project diagram, which will actually create, as you can see, us a diagram of the project dependencies and how the different projects are dependent one uh, on the other. Now we see that here at the very, very first uh, look, we have our API that actually depends on the infrastructure, which contains the database in our case. Uh, that one also depends on this application layer, which is the use cases layer and the weather forecast core, which is the domain. And that's actually good because we can see all the dependencies flow just in one direction. And that's actually how it should be. And that's also uh, a first very important step or, or thing that would uh, point you into the, or that would show that you are headed into the right direction with your clean architecture project. However, Rider has some other very nice features here. Like if we right click here, we have here, first of all, this enable coupling analysis, which will actually analyze how our projects are coupled and also very important show transitive references. Because the idea is that what happens here is that it, this one will also show the dependencies uh, that flow directly. So, uh, but as you, for instance, depend in the API project on the use cases layer, which in our case is the application project, that project depends on the domain layer itself. So this is, you see, a transitive dependency because even if you don't depend directly on it, Another project that you depend on depends on a third project, and this is a transitive reference. So let's also show the different transitive references that we have right now. And we see that we have right now a totally different picture. But this picture is also very, very important because it shows us some very important stuff. Now, the first thing is that we see that here we have once again our weather forecast, uh, a clean API. And we see that our API depends uh, on the application layer, which uh, is okay, because this is the use cases layer, but it also depends on the weather forecast infrastructure layer. However, if we click on this one, we see that the only dependency that we have here is due to the fact that we have wired it or that we needed that uh, in the dependency injection container. And for that, uh, or due to this reason, it resulted in a compile time dependency. And that's why this is actually showing up here as a dependency. But if we wouldn't have this DI container that works in a very, very specific way, theoretically, this, uh, this API layer would not depend on this infrastructure layer at all. And this is a very, very important stuff to really look into your application's structure. So whenever you have doubts, just make sure that the infrastructure layer in your API is always used only in the startup class or in the program class if you have a newer .NET Core 6 applications, because that is the only place where you should have a reference using to the infrastructure project in your API layer. Now, of course, this infrastructure layer depends also on the domain layer, but it also depends, of course, on the weather uh, forecast clean application layer because it implements the interface for the repository. So this is a direct dependency. And that's the very cool stuff about inversion of control because here in this application layer, we define some dependencies. The application layer works uh, self-contained only using that abstraction and we implement that abstraction elsewhere and this layer this application layer doesn't really care about who implements that as you can see there is really no binding at all no dependency at all between or no relation at all even between the application layer and the infrastructure layer so the only thing is that this weather forecast the application layer it depends on the core which is the domain layer and has the API layer as a dependent. And this is the way that we can see that actually 
uh, this infrastructure is not really part 100% of that uh, onion type layer, but it's just simply a layer outside of that flow of dependencies that happens to implement or provide implementations for the interfaces that we actually define here in the weather forecast uh, uh, in the uh, application layer. And of course, everything depends on the core, on the domain itself, but the domain doesn't depend on anything. And once again, the main or the major difference in comparison to the layered architecture that I proposed in the other video is that instead of defining uh, or that instead of defining or de defining the interfaces in the domain layer, here in this case, if we follow clean architecture in the domain layer, you have only classes that are 100% related to the enterprise rules of, 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 about how your application should work. It should not know anything about application flows, which happens to be in the services. And of course, it shouldn't know or have any idea about how data is retrieved. And that's why, and that's the main reason why we moved this interface declaration, uh, declaration for repositories and services, we move that in this application layer. And that's basically it. Now, I know that this video did become a little bit longer, but I, uh, I strongly hope that after this video, you can have a better approach and a better understanding on what actually or how you can structure a new ASP.NET Core application according to the clean architecture principles, at least the way that you could proceed for most of the applications that you are building. This is the approach in which you have, uh, I would say, a very anemic domain model because you just have classes there. So it's not a domain driven design approach. You could use, of course, also clean architecture with a domain driven design approach and maybe even with CQRS. And if you have watched uh, our live coding session uh, that, that we do, uh, on creating a social network web API, it's exactly what we do there. We follow this clean architecture principles, but we have applied a richer domain model to that, and we have used CQRS um, to, to handle with the different uh, application flows. And probably I will extract a video only on that model or on how you can use then a clean architecture with domain driven design concepts and CQRS. And that would be the approach that you would probably have to take or that you would have to consider at least when you would have to build applications that you know upfront that would become very, very big and large. So yeah, thank you very, very much for watching and for uh, holding on actually to the end of this video, but I hope uh, that the reward uh, was fair enough for you. Uh, if you did enjoy this video and think that this content might be useful also for others, don't be shy and hit the thumbs, uh, thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell to be notified whenever we publish something new. And of course, feel free to share this with your peers, with your friends, uh, through whichever channel you actually might see fit. Uh, it could be social networks, it could be email, teams, whatever. But if you know people that might find this interesting, let them know, spread the word. Uh, the word sharing is caring, and I would totally appreciate that. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.